This is the first big secret. SpaceX keeps up a launch about every two days. They do this mostly using just three main launch pads for their Falcon 9 rocket. They do not need 10 pads. They do not need 20, just three. This sounds like it should be impossible. For a long time, people thought rockets were fragile machines. They thought you could only use a rocket one time. They thought the launch pad was a place that took months to fix. But that has changed. A launch pad is the spot where the rocket stands before it flies. It has big pipes for fuel. It has thick power lines and computers. It has tall towers to stop lightning. It has deep trenches to catch the fire from the engines. In the old days, a launch made the pad very dirty. The fire was so hot, it would melt metal and break concrete. It took weeks or even months to get the pad ready for the next flight. SpaceX decided to do things differently. They built their pads to be tough. Now, a Falcon 9 pad can be ready again in just two to four days. Sometimes they even do it faster. This means one single pad can handle many launches every month. When you use three pads this way, the numbers get very big very fast. These three pads are in two main places. Two are in Florida and one is in California. Let us look at Florida first. There is a place called Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. This pad is famous. This is where the Apollo moon mission started. It is where the space shuttles used to take off. Today, SpaceX uses it for the Falcon 9 and the much bigger Falcon Heavy. This is also the only place where astronauts can climb into the Dragon capsule to go to the space station. Just down the road is the second pad called Space Launch Complex 40. People use usually just call it SLC-40. This pad is the real workhorse. It handles the most flights for Starlink satellites. While one pad is launching, the other is getting its pipes and wires checked for the next one. On the other side of the country in California, there is a third pad at Vandenberg Space Force Base. This is Pad 4E. It handles launches that need to go over the ocean toward the poles of the Earth. Having these three spots allows SpaceX to cover every part of the sky, but the pads are only half of the story. You also need a rocket that can fly again and again. In the past, every rocket was a brand new build. It was like building a whole new 747 airplane for every single trip from New York to London. Then when the trip was over, you would throw the airplane into the ocean. That is how we used to go to space. It was very expensive. It cost so much that only big governments could afford it. SpaceX changed the math. Their Falcon 9 rocket is built to land. After it pushes the top part of the rocket towards space, the bottom part comes back down. It uses small fins that look like kitchen spatulas to steer through the air. Then it fires its engines to slow down. It lands on four legs, either back at the pad or on a big boat in the ocean. This bottom part is the most expensive part of the rocket. It has nine big engines. Reusing it is like being able to keep the most expensive part of your car instead of buying a new one every week. Some of these rocket boosters have flown 20 times or more. This is where the competence shows. They have turned landing a rocket into something that looks easy. It is like watching a professional athlete hit a home run. It looks simple because they have practiced it hundreds of times. This constant practice is a big advantage. It is a scoreboard that everyone can see. In 2023, SpaceX launched 96 times. That is about one launch every four days for the whole year. No other company or country has ever done that. To put that in perspective, 96 launches is enough to send a rocket up twice a week every single week without stopping. If you look at the rest of the world, they are far behind. This is what we call a competitive scoreboard. It shows who is winning the race to make space a normal place for business. When you launch that much, you start to see patterns. You learn how to fix small problems before they become big ones. You learn how to make the engines better and the fuel tanks lighter. This is strategic intelligence. It means SpaceX is not just guessing. They are using data from every flight to get faster and cheaper. This leads us to the money 
money. Money is always the big question in space. For a long time, the U.S. government paid for everything. One big rocket called the SLS costs about $4.1 billion for every single launch. That is a huge number. To understand how big that is, $4.1 billion is enough money to buy every person in a city the size of Green Bay, Wisconsin, a brand new truck. NASA only flies that rocket once every year or two. SpaceX is different. They do not use as much of your tax dollars for their own rockets. They sell rides to other people and companies. Because they reuse their rockets, they can charge much less. A ride on a Falcon 9 might cost around $67 million. That sounds like a lot, but compared to $4 billion, it is a tiny fraction. It is like the difference between buying a fancy private jet and buying a ticket on a regular bus. This low cost has changed the whole world of space. Now, smaller countries and even schools can afford to send things into orbit. It has moved space from being a place for heroes to being a place for industry. It is like the difference between the first explorers crossing the ocean and a modern cargo ship carrying thousands of boxes. SpaceX is now the big cargo ship of the world. In one year, they can carry more than 80% of all the weight that goes into space. Think about that for a second. If you put all the satellites and supplies launched by every country on a scale, SpaceX launched four-fifths of it. The rest of the world combined, including China and Russia, only launched the last little bit. This is a massive change in how things work. It means one company has become the main pipeline for the entire planet. When you are the pipeline, you set the rules. You decide how fast things move. This has big consequences for the future. Other companies are trying to catch up. Boeing has a ship called Starliner that was supposed to take astronauts to space, but it has had many problems and failures. It has been delayed for years. This is a sign of an old way of doing things. The old way was slow and cost too much money. It relied on big government checks instead of fast testing. When engineers at the old companies knew about problems, the systems they worked in were often too slow to change. SpaceX works more like a tech company Company. If something is broken, they fix it today, not next year. This is the technical mastery that sets them apart. They are not afraid to break things during tests to see how they work. This is how they built the Starlink system. Starlink is a group of thousands of small satellites that provide internet to the whole world. To build it, SpaceX had to launch a lot of rockets. They now have over 6,000 satellites in the sky. These satellites are about the size of a kitchen table. They fly in a big big web around the Earth. Because SpaceX owns the rockets, they can launch their own satellites for a very low price. This is like a trucking company owning the factory that makes the trucks and the fuel stations too. It makes it very hard for anyone else to compete. The only real competition right now comes from China. China is launching a lot of rockets too. They have their own space station and they are planning to send people to the moon. They are very good at hitting their deadlines. If they say they will launch on a certain day, they usually do. This is a serious race. It is a hunt for information and power in the high ground of space. For the U.S. to stay ahead, it needs a system that works every day, not just once in a while. This is why the launch pads California are so important. They are the heartbeat of the American space program. If those pads stopped working, the whole system would grind to a halt. Right now, those pads are busier than ever. SpaceX is aiming for 144 launches in 2024. That would be one launch every two or three days. To do that, they have to be perfect. Every person on the crew has to know their job perfectly. This is a competence hierarchy. The people who are the best at their jobs are the ones who make sure the rocket stays safe. It is a high-pressure job. If one bolt is loose or one wire is frayed, the whole mission could fail. But they have done it so many times now that it has become a routine. It is like a pit crew in a car race. They can change the tires and fill the tank in seconds because they have practiced it thousands of times. This industrial rhythm is the new normal. If you grew up watching the Apollo missions, space felt like a rare and special event. You would stop what you were doing to watch the TV. Now, space is becoming like the weather. It happens all the time and you might not even notice it, but it 
that runs our modern world. Your phone uses satellites to tell you where you are. Your TV uses them to show you the big game. Even the gas pump at the corner uses satellites to track money. We are leaning more and more on this high-speed supply chain in the sky. SpaceX has built the backbone of that chain. They are not just winning contracts, they are shaping what gets built next. Because it is now cheaper to get to space, people are designing bigger and better satellites. They are planning factories in space that can make better medicines. They are planning mines on the moon to get rare metals. None of this would be possible if a launch still cost $4 billion. The lower price acts like a key that opens a door. Behind that door is a whole new economy. This is why the scoreboard matters so much. It is not just about bragging. It is about who can provide the most value for the least amount of money. In the world of economics, that is how you win. And right now, SpaceX is winning by a mile. They have turned space into a factory setting. They are moving most of the actual stuff. By the middle of the year, they usually carry near nine-tenths of all satellites by weight. This is total dominance. It means the world's space economy is starting to lean on one single pipeline. Once you become the pipeline, you do not just follow the industry, you are the industry. The next 10 years will be less about who can launch a rocket and more about who can build a high-speed supply chain. The real contest is not about one single hero moment. It is about doing it again and again, year after year. It is about making space feel like a normal place to work. We are watching a new kind of infrastructure get built in real time. One launch every couple of days is the pulse of this new world. It is the sound of the future arriving. It is the result of hard work and simple math. If you can use a tool more than once, it costs less. If it costs less, you can use it more often. If you use it more often, you get better at it. This is a simple circle that has led to a revolution. It is a story of competence and grit. It shows what happens when you stop treating rockets like museum pieces and start treating them like trucks. The result is a sky full of possibilities. We are no longer limited by how much the government wants to spend. We are limited only by how fast we can build things and send them up. This is a big win for everyone who uses technology. It protects our resources by making them easier to manage from above. It shows strategic intelligence in how we use our money. It is a hunt for a better way to live. And as long as those three launch pads keep busy, the future of space will keep getting closer every single day. The world is changing, and the people who can move the most, wait the fastest, are the ones who will lead the way. SpaceX has proven they can do it. They have the rockets, they have the pads, and they have the rhythm. Now the rest of the world has to decide if they want to try to catch up or if they will just watch the show. Either way, the scoreboard is clear. The the industrial age of space has begun, and it is moving at full speed. This is not just a story about rockets. It is a story about how we solve big problems. It is about looking at an old way of doing things and realizing it doesn't make sense anymore. It's about having the guts to try something that everyone else says is impossible. For years, the experts said you couldn't land an orbital rocket. They said the heat and the speed were too much. They said the weight of the extra fuel would make the rocket useless. But the people at SpaceX didn't listen to the word impossible. They looked at the physics. They saw that the fuel didn't cost that much compared to the metal of the rocket. They saw that if they could save the engines, they could save the business. This is the ultimate example of resource protection. They protected their most valuable assets by bringing them home. And because they did, they now have a fleet of rockets that have been to space and back. It's like having a fleet of used cars that you know work perfectly because they've already driven across the country 20 times. You trust them more than a brand new car that hasn't been tested. This builds a hierarchy of trust. Customers like NASA and the Space Force trust these flight-proven rockets. They know the hardware has survived the toughest environment there is. This creates a cycle of success. Each successful landing adds to the scoreboard. Each successful relaunch proves the model works. And each day that passes with a launch from Florida or California is a day that America stays ahead in the new space race. 
This is about more than just satellites. It's about being the best at something hard. It's about technical mastery. It's about showing that with the right focus, we can still build things that change the world. The next time you look up at the night sky and see a string of Starlink satellites moving like a train, remember those three launch pads. Remember the crews working in the Florida heat and the California wind. They are the ones making it happen. They are the ones turning the dream of space into a daily reality. It's a big job, but they are doing it one launch at a time every couple of days until the impossible starts to feel like just another day at the office. This is the industrial rhythm that will take us to the moon, to Mars, and beyond. It all starts with a pad, a rocket, and the will to keep going. We are moving toward a time when a thousand people might live and work in orbit. We are looking at a future where the moon is a place people go for work, not just for a visit. It. To get there, we need a bridge. SpaceX has built that bridge out of steel and fire. They have made it strong enough to handle the weight of our biggest dreams. And they have made it cheap enough that we can actually afford to cross it. That is the real punchline of the whole data set. Space is no longer just for the few. It is for everyone. And it is